there, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Patoni here. The Pokedex continues to be an invaluable, if a little bit unreliable, source of information about the Pokemon world. It says some ridiculous things about these creatures, but then I suppose if it didn't, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this, where I talk about three Pokemon that if they existed in the real world, would be uh, incredible. Let's just get straight into it. Because Pokemon Sun and Moon bought a whole bunch of new entries and I want to talk about this one first. Number 372, Shelgon. Shelgon is a dragon type Pokemon and it's a transitional phase between the angsty Bagon and the all powerful and dreaded Salamence, a dragon Pokemon feared throughout the Pokemon world. But what if I told you that Shelgon's biology was far more incredible than that of Salamence's? And this is because of the new Pokedex entry that Shelgon has which says that they lurk deep within caves, motionless. They don't eat or drink, and why they don't die is unknown. Wait, why they don't die? Why don't they die if they don't eat or drink? Let's take a look. So, first off, jumping straight into it, what it means by the fact it doesn't die is that it doesn't die of aging in a natural way. Chances are it's going to evolve before then. But how can it survive without eating or drinking? Well, think of Shelgon like an egg, the creature inside feeding off the yolk, or even a cocoon where the creature in its transitional phase, much like Shelgon, completely turns to goop inside the outer cocoon. And then its cells are restructuring while it works out what it's gonna become next. And actually, this is also hinted at in one of Shelgon's new Pokedex entries, which says, the cells within its body transform at explosive speed, preparing it for evolution. What we can deduce from this is that Bagon, its pre-evolved form, probably isn't motionless. Most likely it runs around and gets all the food it needs. It eats large meals, preparing itself for the next phase. And then in the form of Shelgon, it consumes all of that food that it's got stockpiled away. Don't think that that's possible? Well, while the best a human can manage is rumored to be anywhere between 40 and 90 days without eating, there are some animals that can go days, months, or even years. Camels are famously known to store water in their humps, although it's not actually water. What they're storing is fat, and the cells, the chemical reaction within their humps, then breaks that down into other minerals it needs, and this allows it to go a long time between meals without eating. And some crocodiles that can live off a big meal are said to go even two years without eating. Actually, it's very common in a lot of reptiles to have a big meal and then not eat for a while. If Shelgon is motionless, then it's not expending a lot of energy externally, which which means it doesn't have to worry about having a very fast metabolism. All it needs is the nutrients in its body to keep it alive while its cells change and restructure, preparing it for evolution. And again, like I say, it's very common in reptiles, and what is a dragon if not a giant lizard? Moving on, there's another incredible Pokemon in Hoenn, and that is number 375. Matang. Matang, as I talked about in a previous video, can move at a ridiculous speed, actually levitating and floating at speeds exceeding 60 miles per hour. It is also, according to this Pokedex entry, attracted to the minerals within Nose Pass. So what I was wondering at the time of making that video is what would happen at a Matang with the weight of the, that it is traveling at that kind of speed if it collided with Nose Pass. And uh, I am not smart enough to do the research on my own, so I had some help from Pokemon professors Amy and Curtis. Pokemon professor Amy is the animator who you've seen doing all of these animations on my channel. And Professor Curtis is her friend, and he seems to be a pretty smart guy. Anyway, according to these calculations, we can work out that the height of Matang's disc space is about 0.6 meters high. With its arms being another 0.6 meters, contributing to its total height, which makes sense because Beldum is 0.6 meters tall as well and Matang's arms are basically two Beldum, so you've got that to work with. And then we can use that information as well as its weight to try and determine the volume of that space, of that disc space. From that we can learn that it's only about 300 kilograms per meter cubed, which actually isn't very dense for steel. And Nose Pass is also not very dense, being a rock that is 350 kilograms per meter cubed. However, knowing these two things are very, very helpful, because then we can plug them to an equation that allows you to work out how far Matang would burrow into Nose Pass. And it's safe to say that a steel disc like that would pretty much clean cut through nose pass, especially seeing as it seems to be designed for that with the very pointy nose. Matang would slice it in half, but let's say that's your nose pass and you want to protect it and you stand in the way. It's difficult to know what kind of impact it's going to have because there really is no real world equivalent to a flying metal disc coming at a person. Certainly not one propelled by psychic energy, which is a totally made up thing. But there is, however, wrecking balls. Wrecking balls work a little bit different. They are propelled by momentum. That said, Matang's density is equal to some lightweight wrecking balls, and wrecking balls tend to be lifted around about 10 meters in the air. 
To gain the kind of speed and velocity of Matang, it's going to be needed to lift it 40 meters in the air, which is pretty ridiculous, but it's certainly enough for any small wrecking ball to take the roof off the house. So yeah, if you get in the way, say goodbye to your ribs and skeleton. Because a small wrecking ball the size and weight of Matang dropped from a height of 10 meters is still going to be traveling at you at a velocity of around about 4,500 kilograms per second. And like I say, to be traveling at Matang speed, it's going from way, way, way further up. And that transfer of momentum into you is just gonna shatter everything. So that's pretty dark. <laughs> But this is weirdly not the only example of bone shattering in the Pokemon world because a new Pokedex entry of my favorite Pokemon from the new generation is kind of scary. And that is Pokemon number 760, Beware. Because this Pokemon has a habit of hugging its companions, ah. And many trainers have apparently left this world at the hug of a Beware who has squashed their spine. Oh, okay. Okay! Now, we've all heard the term bear hug, but there aren't a lot of examples of well, bears hugging people that we can work with here, but there is an interesting one we can look at, and that is the hug of a snake. Because the best real-world equivalent I could find was pythons and other constricting snakes, like the boa constrictor. We're going to be talking about one of those in a moment. But the way these snakes kill their prey is by coiling around them and crushing their bones. That's the kind of power inside a snake. And that in turn makes the prey easier to digest. And Beware is very much doing the same, it's constricting. Beware is around about seven foot or two meters tall. And actually, if you look at its arm span, it's about that wide. So that's what we're looking for, a snake that is about two meters long. National Geographic looked at some small snakes and determined that they could do about eight pounds of damage per square inch. So multiply by 100 for the snake wrapping around you, you're looking at around 800 pounds of pressure. That's like having a motorbike sitting on your chest. But for this case, we're gonna look at the Cuban bow constrictor wrapping around you because it's about the length of the wear's arms. And that can do 25 pounds of damage per square inch. Again, multiplied by 100 for the snake wrapping around you. You're looking at 2,500 pounds of pressure on you. The beware standing behind you, hugging you and pulling you in. 2,500 pounds is over a ton of weight. And when Googling what things weigh a ton, the polar bear came up. Actually, the polar bear is a bit lighter, but it's basically like having a bear standing behind you and then pulling you in with the force of another bear. You're just getting squashed, basically. And yeah, your spine is not surviving that ordeal. What can I tell you? The Pokemon world is a dangerous place, Pokemon Masters. I can only research it so far, so it's up to you to stay safe out there. What other Pokedex entries absolutely terrify you? You'll have to let me know in the comments. So hi, Pokemon Masters. A thank you to my Patreon supporters of the month, and a big special thank you to the big supporters of the month, those being Victor Casado and John D. Gottlich. Thank you. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon.